Hello, this is Myra Elaine on the Buying Space channel. Today is Easter Sunday. So instead of a, doing a tour reading, I'm going to do some more liturgy from the Lutheran devotional book and hymnal, and also from adult Bible studies. So I'm making a combination of the two for the Easter Sunday evening service. Today, I'm reading from the de devotional, and I'm reading a collect, which is what they call a prayer, to be said during the service. Here is the prayer. Almighty God, whom through thy only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, has overcome death, and opened unto us the gate of everlasting life, we humbly beseech thee, that as thou dost put into our minds good desires, so by thy continual help we may bring the same to good effect through the name Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Now, normally, all this week, during Holy Week, I have read the passage from the Old Testament and the New Testament and then the Gospel. Today, this evening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to not read what is suggested here because I've already read these passages through the week. So this is like a duplication. If you would have services every day, uh, you would either choose to repeat these passages or make another selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my adult Bible studies, or what I did was I went to a, my adult Bible studies, and I picked two selections from here. Now, I don't really normally read either the Gospel or the Psalms, or from Psalm, because I read them at other times on my channel. Uh, because it's Easter, I'm reading from Psalms, and I'm reading from the Gospel, because, well, it's Easter. And I'll probably do the same thing uh, during the holiday is at Christmas. So, the two of the recommended readings from uh, the Adult Bible Studies was Psalms 30, 1 through 6, in, or 1 through 8, and then 8 through 12, which is the entire chapter, which 12 verses is not bad at all, and uh, is true blessing. Psalm chapter 30, I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You're, you refuse to let my enemies triumph over me. Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O oh Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing unto the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment. But his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. When I was prosperous, I said, nothing can stop me now. Your favor, O oh Lord, made me as secure as the mountain. Then you turned away from me, and I was shattered. I cried out to you, O oh Lord, I beg the Lord for mercy, saying, What will you gain if I die, if I sink into the grave? Can my dust praise you? Can I tell you of your faithfulness? Hear me, O oh Lord, I have mercy on me. Help me, O oh God. You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that I might sing praises to you and not to be silent. 
O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. What a wonderful reading for Easter because Jesus was arrested and betrayed and tortured and died on a cross, an agonizing death. But he didn't stay dead. He rose from the grave and talked to his disciples and gave them powers and ascended to heaven. And he is with Almighty God. But he is also with us. And a lot of you might be saying, okay, when the sun goes down, when the sun comes up tomorrow, Easter is over. So what? I'll tell you so what. This is the point where we go into the beginning of Christianity, the beginning of the church. This is the point where we roll up our sleeves and we spread the word of God. We tell people that Christ rose from the dead. That he had the power of resurrection and so much more. And you can have the power of resurrection. You can be born again in Christ. And after you die, you can resurrect in Christ and not stay dead and have eternal life. That's the so what after Easter. The time between Easter and Christmas is not a time for people not to go to church. It's not a time for people just to ignore God and just go to the beach. Of course, you can love God and go to the beach, trust me. But put on your suntan lotion, please. I'm tired of seeing uh, bright red Taurus walk around. <laughs> anyway, so... The reading from the New Testament is in 1 Corinthians. Let me see if there's been an earlier duplication of 1 Corinthians during this Holy Week. There has been a 1 Corinthians reading, but it's not the same chapter and verse, which is wonderful. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. There are two suggested readings in 1 Corinthians. Neither one has been read earlier in the Holy Week. So 1 Corinthians 15. Twenty to 26 is our New Testament reading. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all those who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam. Everyone who belongs to Christ will be given a new life, but there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest. Then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. After that, the end will come when he will turn kingdom, the kingdom over to God the Father having destroyed every ruler and authority and power. For Christ must reign until he humbles all the enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. For the scriptures say, God has put all things under his authority. Of course, when it says all things are under his authority, that does not include God himself who gave Jesus Christ his authority. 
Then when all things are under his authority, the Son will himself under God's authority, so that God, who gave his Son authority over all things, will be utterly supreme over everything everywhere. If the dead will not be raised, what point is there in people being baptized for those who are dead? Why do it unless the dead will someday rise again? What a wonderful point. I'd never thought of it that way. I'd probably read this passage of scripture sometime in the past and not realized the implica full implication of it. So, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 5 and read two verses. Seven and eight, First Corinthians five, seven and eight. Get rid of the old yeast by removing this wicked person from among you. Then you will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the festival, not with the old bread of wickedness and evil, but with the new bread of sincerity and truth. Wow. What does that mean? Does that mean uh, we as Christians are should uh, kick people out of the church? I don't think so. I think this is talking about decay and the old law. We are under a new covenant since Jesus Christ sacrificed himself on the cross. When um, people come into the church these days, even Messianic Jews, they don't have to be circumcised, for instance. That's part of the old law. So we're to throw out the old bread. People choose to uh, circumcise their babies for medical reasons, and that's fine. But it's absolutely, positively unnecessary anymore because that's part of the old law. We have grace a merciful God, graceful, merciful God. And we need to go forth with serenity and truth. And we need to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to go to the gospel reading. It's in Mark. Four Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they each tell the story of the life of Christ. Mark 16. But they tell it in their own unique ways, from their own perspective. The Gospels are genuine. So Mark... Chapter 16. I hope you all are having a wonderful Easter Sunday. Joyful and happy. Mark 16, 1 through 7. The Resurrection Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, 
whom will roll away the stone for us. From the entrance to the tomb but as they arrived they looked up and saw the stone which was very large had already been rolled aside then they entered the tomb and saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side the women were shocked but the angel said don't be alarmed you are looking for jesus of nazareth who was crucified he is in here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You should see him there just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, and they said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. And some other manuscripts include the following. Then they briefly reported all this to Peter and his companions. Afterward, Jesus himself sent them out from the east to the west with the sacred and unfailing message of salvation that gives eternal life. Amen. And there's an even longer ending to Mark in some transcripts. After Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene, the woman from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went to his disciples who were grieving and weeping and told them what had happened. But she found, she told them that Jesus was alive and she'd seen him. They didn't believe her. Afterwards, he appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem into the country they rushed back to tell the others but no one believed them still later he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together he rebuked them for not their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had risen from the dead and he told them go into the world and preach the good news to everyone anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned that's the unpardonable sin these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe they will cast out demons in my name they will speak in new languages they will be able to handle snakes and safely and they will drink anything poisonous it won't hurt them they will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed then the lord jesus finished talking with them he was taken up to heaven and set down in the place of honor at god's right hand and the disciples went everywhere and preached and the lord worked through them confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. So it wasn't only Thomas who doubted. Until they saw him himself. Even though he had told them. In so many ways during his life. What was going to happen. When he stood in the temple. And said I can tear down this temple. And rebuild it in three days. He was talking about himself. Yet they crucified him for saying that. They used that against him. When it was the gospel. It is time. That Christians go forward. And teach. 
and preach. And if you're a Christian, you belong to a church that has a liturgy where people are ordained to preach. Absolutely, positively respect that. But that doesn't prevent you from being a witness to being the wonderful nature of being a Christian and having forgiveness and being able to walk and talk and not have fear or anxiety because you have eternal life. Don't look to today or tomorrow or next week or next year. Look to eternity and spread the word to others so that they can do the same because Jesus is risen and he's in the world today. And all we have to do is tell other people, let's build Christ's kingdom around us full of love faith and hope instead of fear and anxiety what does it matter if the world is ending tomorrow or next week or next year or a thousand more years from now which is entirely possible we need to focus on a risen savior And not have our mind in apocalyptic events. Yes, let's discuss it. But our focus, our spirit, our nature needs to be in the present. When we are teaching. But talking about eternity. And the stuff in between. Take it as it comes. I hope that makes sense to some of you. You all have a wonderful and blessed Easter. <laughs>